Hello, Pete. Made up to be chatting with you, mate. How's it going in, uh, in Gateacre, as people might say outside of Liverpool? Well, I've heard it called all kinds, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, love it. Yeah. Good yeah. old. Get the, the Americans love it. Yeah. Gateacre. Yeah. <laughs> it's a site, a historical site, isn't it? There's plaques there saying, you know, I know me, my uncle, he's got a house in Gattaca, and he removed the state old 18th century stable doors from his house. And a neighbour complained, and they had to put them back on. Didn't serve any purpose, but you, you, there's a law against changing any of the, the buildings. There is, yeah. There's a protected thing. Um, our local pub, the Bear and Staff, for instance, yeah. they, they can't do anything unless they get permission. So, yeah, that's, that's a beautiful place to go for a pint. It's sort of hidden the car park. There's a huge car park. You might drive past it and not see yeah. it. But it's got loads of nice meals in there. Oh, yeah, it's a lovely place. Good to relax there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, P before we talk about um, the, the novel, The Lost Dogs of Mauritius, that, <laughs> just mention your name, Pete Chegwin. Is that a link there with the, the famous, what people know, the Keith Chegwin? Yeah, so it's um, it's my dad's dad's brother's son, which mm. makes him a cousin. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so I met him, met him a couple of times in the younger years. You can imagine what, what I was like when I was going to school, because he was oh, on his yeah. peak. Yeah, yeah. So I was called Swap Chegwin. shopping links. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, and me and my auntie, of course, was Janice Long. Oh yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's Keith's sister. Yeah, claims to fame. <laughs> well, I had an uncle that used to play for Liverpool as well. What same? What was this Chegwin surname? No, Alan Hignett. He married my mum's sister. Oh yeah. He used to play. He used to play left back, yeah. and uh, he got a cruciate knee ligament injury against Wolves and. That did him in, and then he went to Australia with me, auntie, and um, yeah. he became a coach. Oh, nice one. Do you know what my uncle played for Liverpool in the 60s? Jimmy Melia on the Shankly oh, team yeah, that came yeah. up from the second to first division. And he went yeah. on to be a manager. He's mostly known, I think, for managing Brighton. And he took yeah. um, Man United to the, the final. I think it was 1984, the FA Cup final. Then they had the, oh, fantastic. Yeah. He, he moved to um, Houston. He was coaching over there in his 80s now. Yeah, I had, to, I had to go over. I lived with my uncle when I was uh, seven till I was 11 in Australia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so... so uh, you, know, you didn't fancy staying there? No, what happened, I, I was in the uh, Alder Hay Hospital for about uh, four or five months with pneumonia, then whooping oh. cough and stuff like that. Bloody hell. And I remember getting sent home, my yeah. dad wrapping me up in a blanket, we get in a taxi, yeah. turn up at Manchester Airport, and there's my grandmother and me off to Australia for three wow. years. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal, that. Warm weather. Oh, yeah, yeah, to yeah, help the recovery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it did me well, anyway. Oh, that's good, <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's talk about um, your, your background. You've got a musician in your Twitter title. You've got links with Liverpool bands from the 80s, 90s. Yeah, I was in um, I was in three Liverpool bands, yeah. uh, Dance Macabre, The Dream Theatre, and Ex Post Facto. Wow. Uh, played keyboards, wrote... Yeah wrote keyboard music, didn't write lyrics. Um, and we, we toured all over. We had uh, three singles out, 12-inch single. Yeah. We supported Flock of Seagulls and yeah. OMD. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had a fantastic time. Yeah, it was great. Oh, brilliant. Loved it. Dance Macabre, is that a link with the Stephen King book about the about writing about um, occult fiction and things? Oh, I'd have, to, I'd have to ask the, uh, the, the band's singer, Pete ah. Carroll, at the time, because... Okay. Uh, he came up with the idea of the name of the band, but yeah, um, but yeah it, it had to come to an end now, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Did, did you make a lot of money? Did you become rich and famous with it? No, um, we, we actually got signed up to Chrysalis Records and oh, we yeah. got an advance. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, the rest of the band decided to spend their money unwisely on, on other stuff that we shouldn't be talking about on this platform. <laughs> yeah, good, good thing. Illustrated as well as you've got on your Twitter profile. Is that a hobby of yours, illustrations? I've always done um, pencil drawings of animals for oh, the yeah. family and that. Um, and obviously for, for the Lost Dogs of Mauritius, I did the painting for that. Oh, yeah. The, the cover, the thing behind me, yeah? Yeah. That's superb. Yeah, I was adamant. Something really professional. I had an idea where I wanted, uh, painted it, and uh, Catherine, my editor... Yeah. She knows an illustrator who took that painting and made magic out of it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Brilliant. Really uh, good. 
You, you mentioned Catherine. That's Catherine Hall, isn't it? I've, I've done a, had is, a chat, yeah. chat with Catherine. She's superb. Well, oh, how did yeah. you get in touch? Did you write the book first? Have you, have you published independently or you were the traditional publisher? No, I've published through Amazon. Yeah. Um, and I, I know that there'll be some, some other things around that. But yeah. um, so one of my good pals who I've known for about 20 years is an author called Ian Wilson. Oh, yeah. And Ian Wilson has, uh, left, has, has published two books. And um, so he's got the books he's got now. Um, he's currently doing The Nowhere, Nowhere Man is his latest one, yeah. which is at five stars all over Amazon. Brilliant. Uh, and his first book, The Twilight Cruise, which apparently looks as though it's going to film. Oh, yeah. And, and I'd written the book. I'd showed him how I was writing the book because I was yeah. just getting advice off him. Yeah. And uh, I said, right, I've done it. I said, I'm fed up of getting puddled off by people wanting three or four grand off me oh, to publish it. Do you know, so many and writers went, of chat who say the same thing. There's an yeah. industry out there waiting to take your money. Oh, no. And he said, Pete, he said, go to my editor, Catherine Hall. Yeah. Give me an email address. And, and I texted her, email, and she came straight back. We had a, we had a Zoom call, mm. and she is just fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't falter. Mm. I've heard so many people saying the same thing. Got a great website as well, I think. She does yes, go, yeah. ghostwriting as well as the editing services. She does, yeah. Yeah. No. But she she went she went the extra mile with the book because yeah. it was obviously my first book. Yeah. And um, she she taught me so much, but um yeah, absolutely brilliant. But t- tell us more about the book then. Tell us about the, the plot and what age it's aimed at and but I don't really uh, spoil the, age, <laughs> the age range probably yeah. from about six up to about 16 but my sister and and a couple of friends that read the book said it's it's also an escape book uh you know an adult escape book yeah. because there's very few adults in it and yeah. and you know they seem to enjoy it but the, the idea came actually we were in mauritius last october on my honeymoon hmm. me and my wife emma yeah. and i saw two dogs running down the beach the same time every day down the end of the pier <laughs> Yeah. barking at a boat going past with a picture of a dodo on. Oh, yeah, yeah. And as soon as the boat went past and went out of distance, they should have yeah. shook themselves down, looked looked totally fed up, yeah. and then trotted off. And I thought, what's going on here? And I said to my wife, I said, hey, Emma, have, have you got any paper on you? And she said, yeah. uh, only the accommodation things. Let's give us it. And <laughs> she's always started off. <laughs> yeah, that might be worth and a few I, quid down in a few years. Wow, strip. <laughs> in the book, you've got this crab, haven't you? They talked of this crab as the boat goes past. Yeah, Henry, Harry. Yeah, yeah. Harry is Harry, Harry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing about, is about the book, Terry, is that I think about eighty percent of the animals in there are either me and Emma's animals, yeah. or family or friends' animals. Okay, I've included the mall in it. That's a great promotion tool as well. The people whose names are in the book, they're going to have to go out and buy it. You have to sign it for them. Well, the, well Amara, who's, yeah. the, who's the girl at the end of the book, and yeah. her dog, Paco. Yeah. Well, Amara's my niece. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Who, who's the dogs behind you, Pete? I'm looking at the, the, the pictures. A dog there with a Liverpool shirt on. Okay, so that's uh, the one in the black Yeah. is Oscar. Oh, yeah. And the one in the white is Megan. Of course, they're in the book too. <laughs> So yeah. I get to know all the Oscars are grumpy little, so uh, so yeah. I wrote that into the book as well. Okay, is the book intended as a standalone, or have you got a series lined up? The same well, characters. It, 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 Terry, it was going to be a standalone until yeah. uh, until Catherine edited it, and she went, "Oh no, change the ending. Yeah, change the ending. We've got to have another one out of this." So oh, so I rewrote the ending, the final three chapters, yeah, to leave it open. Um, and that's on my list to do. Yeah. So have you actually started it yet? Is it just on your list at the moment? Uh, it, it's on my list, but it's always in my head. And, I, you know, I think about different plots. What happened, I wrote that many plots for the dogs and the animals. Yeah. That Catherine said, you're going to have to cut it short. It's too long. Okay. So now I've got those other chapters to rewrite. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give them a different situation and that, and, and start to work with that. But I've already got four on the go at the moment. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just getting too busy. You can't concentrate on, on all of them at once. Hmm. 
Well, I know 90% of writing is, is in your head, isn't it? You know, the mental process yeah. before you actually get down. It's sort of gone through an editing stage by the time. Do you, you showed me that bit of paper before. Um, is, do you use a notebook for your ideas or do you go straight to the keyboard? No, I can't type on a keyboard. Okay. Yeah. Can't type on a keyboard because I'm, I'm so... It, it, I get my ideas down yeah, and then yeah. if I look at the keyboard and see a typo and it's yeah. highlighting it, I've ah. got to go back and put it right. So you forever have editing. train of thought. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I've literally got five, six, seven big notebooks. Yeah. And then what I have to do is type it up. But luckily for me, yeah. I've got my sister, my sister, my sister-in-law and my wife. Yeah. They'll take different sections and type them up for me. Okay. Are they putting their own edit on, do you think, at the time? There's a danger there, I could see, maybe, of losing your voice. Or are they just copying it verbatim, what are your notes? They're not adding Literally. Them. Yeah. No, they're, they're even doing me typos. Oh, yeah. Because I've said to them, just leave them in there, just physically get them typed, it's because yeah. they type for a living. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, it, that, it works for me, and then I put it all together and then reread it, do a bit of editing myself and go from there. Okay. And obviously, yeah, it goes to Catherine, then she's going to get the, the, the extra pair of eyes on this. The, um, the, the book itself, you mentioned that you've been on honeymoons from Mauritius. Did you yeah. do any other kind of research? I've, I know that there's a couple of other people I've chatted to who've written books, well, about dogs. There's David Pipe. He's got his uh, Henry's Tale book. Did you connect with any other people, or did you do any research about sort of animal books, and dogs in particular? No. No, and then this is the odd thing, Terry. I haven't even watched Harry Potter, any what? one of them, or oh, read yeah. any one of them. Yeah, um, books I read are more, are more factual books. Um, I, you know, I, I don't generally read novels. Very rarely. They, yeah. I, I was I was thinking about it the other day, and and to one of the questions, and the only, if you like, novel that has been science fiction or something like that, are the tales of uh, the Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. I was out in the 80s when I was in the band and I wrote that trilogy, but yeah. now, not researched. Yeah. Don't really look at films. Okay. I'd probably fall asleep 15 minutes into a film, to be honest, because <laughs> I'm not bored. <laughs> <laughs> but my next book is, is called Dora's Day, and it's a true story. And so I'm a lighthouse guide, believe it or not. Lisa oh, yeah, Lighthouse. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. So yeah, tell us so about that. I'm a, lighter, I'm a lighthouse guide, and it's a true story that a single lady and a young daughter ran that lighthouse for years in the in 1700s. Yeah. And I took that story and I've written a children's novel based on Dora and a, and a, a, a mother. Yeah. And I've introduced different characters into it, pirates, because there were pirates in Liverpool in the 1700s, <laughs> yeah. storms, shipwrecks, and um, yeah. that's probably the next one to go out. Yeah. So what's that? This is the lighthouse at Leo. So do you get many visitors? You get like a daily number of people coming in to have a look around. We do the first Sunday and the third Sunday in every month, and we usually get around 140 to 50 people in yeah, a day. That's a decent amount. All kids, kids, yeah. wives, granddads, grandmothers, and I'll take them up in groups of 15 and talk to them about the history, to talk to them about the family. Yeah. But then I start talking about the book. Yeah. And then. Obviously, the lighthouse comes to life. Yeah, I can imagine. And uh, the kids are like, whoa, pirates, <laughs> shipwrecks, whoa. <laughs> is there any element of haunting about that place? No, it's, it's, there it's is, just, yeah. yeah. They, have a, they have paranormal events there probably oh, yeah. every couple of months. Yeah, and apparently the, um, the granddaughter of the lighthouse keeper, Elizabeth, um, she came to see the lighthouse when she was really old yeah. and she walked into the bedroom in the lighthouse and started talking to someone that wasn't there. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Really odd, but uh, it's a magical place. Is it? Brilliant place. Yeah. I, you know what? I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever, I think I've, I've seen loads of lights. I don't think I've ever sort of had to look around inside one. Is it, I can imagine that you'd have to be really fit. It's just a massive big staircase to get to the top and, Check on the lights and things. No, there are there are seven floors in it, yeah. and each floor has got its own room because it, it had three bedrooms, a kitchen, yeah. Yeah. a living room, yeah. and then the lamp room. And there's 130 steps to get to the top. So, and we stop off at some levels on the way up to give you a rest. So. Get, get your rest back. Yeah. <laughs> Do people actually live there then, or people have lived there? I should say. They did, yeah, yeah. So Elizabeth and uh, and her kids. They said she had. Um, she had 13 kids. Yeah. Wow. 
yeah and uh, i know yeah n not all 13 lived there but yeah. uh, the only one to be born there was dora oh yeah and yeah they had to live there they were cut off from the mainland because it was all marshes so yeah. and they had to make it work this sounds what like a brilliant story. I was going to exactly took me words out. I was going to say it sounds like a brilliant story. Have you got That's any of that on paper? Uh, it's all down. It written it's all down. Wow. Yeah. It's down. Yeah, it's down. I've just got to finish the ending of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they say there were wreckers, there were pirates. It was a woman pirate, actually, over on the Wirral, Old Mother Red Cap. Really? True story. Yeah. Tell us. And they're all in it. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I'm, I'm coming over to Leah, so to, to join in one of these things. Go on, tell me about this one part. Never heard of that. So, old Mother Redcap, um, over on the Wirral, um, there was a pub, and uh, she ran this pub, and underneath the pub were tunnels that went all over around to New Brighton, Egremont, it was. It was. Yeah. Um, and what used to happen, they used to put false lights out by the lighthouse yeah. to try and tempt the ships onto the, onto the sand. Because yeah. it was shallow, and if it hit the stand, yeah. they can go out, loot it, bring it all back, and it would go down under Mother Red Caps uh, in. And what she used to have, she used to have a sign, you know, the north, south, east, west. Oh, yeah, yeah. That there used to be yeah. a we weather vane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, there used to be a handle inside. If she pointed it one way, <laughs> it was safe to bring the stuff, and she pointed yeah. it the other, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I had some fun with it. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I think that that'll sell. You know that, that that's a brilliant story. Have you tried? To, have you tried sending that to a traditional publisher? Are you going to do it on Amazon again, independently? I don't know. Yeah, I've taken advice from Catherine to be honest, because yeah. uh, I, I think that book would do well in schools as it well. Would, yeah, it's yeah. local history, yeah. and it's part. It's it's partially true with a bit of my own, if of you course, like, yeah. Yeah. artistic side of it. Yeah. But a lot of it is very true. Um, so yeah, it would, it would, I'm going to look at that and market that particularly for schools and things around this side area. I, I would, I'd send that to an agent, you know. Um, I think, think that as well, that'd do well in libraries. You know, obviously all the public libraries, you know, in the northwest. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. We can see potential for that as well. You know, television series and things. And that, that's what I thought originally because it it really is the lighthouse is there. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, a little girl and a mother running a lighthouse. Hmm. And and it wasn't it, it's not a traditional lighthouse. It was a beacon, and it was a beacon that matched up with another lighthouse, Bidston Light. What what I, I don't understand is that like to so say right like a traffic light, you know, is the amber light uh, is the beacon. What does it, it mean? It was simply a big fire on the top of the lighthouse in the seventeen hundreds. Yeah. And what happened? The ships used to come in. Yeah. Big four masted sailor ships. Yeah. They look for the so light. And they line it up with Bidston Lighthouse, which is on Bidston Hill. Yeah. And as soon as the two lights lined up, yeah. they knew they could then turn right safely into the estuary for Liverpool oh. Channel. Oh, yeah. Yeah. At the time, that was one of the busiest shipyards in the world, wasn't it? Really, you know, the, was, on the yeah. triangle, aren't they? You know, from Africa, Liverpool, and then to America for the cotton fields. Yeah. Um, but when you think of it, Terry, there was no, uh, no radio, no mm -hmm. telephones. Everything had to be via semaphore. Yeah. to communicate to say which ships were coming in yeah yeah it's a great story it's, it is it's, it's, a, it's a gorgeous story love it well I, we, we well we hadn't planned on talking about this but i'm delighted that we have it's gone off on a different set i think we'll be talking more about this book than, than the book you just <laughs> published <laughs> um we connected on twitter what other social media are you using for promotion for the book um i, I i'm useless at instagram Instagram, but my sister-in-law and my wife, yeah. they've put me on there. Oh, yeah. Uh, and they're pushing it out on there. But uh, I haven't really, because the book's only been out for about a week and a half. Oh, yeah. yeah. I haven't really set out and thought of where I'm going to try and get it out and push it. I've obviously Facebook. Yeah. I've done it. I've done it on Twitter. You've seen, I think you've yeah. seen the post for that as well. Yeah. Um, I've had some really lovely uh, comments back from Twitter. Oh, good. There was a lady who's an author herself, yeah. and she's also a teacher. And she said, I've downloaded your book yesterday. She said, I've got into the first probably 10 chapters. And she said, it, it's beautiful. Brilliant. She said, and I love it that much. I'm yeah. going to stop reading and wait for my grandchildren to come <laughs> and nice. read it with them. So yeah. I was really pleased about that. That gives you a buzz, you know, as an author, getting feedback like that. It makes it worthwhile, doesn't it? Yeah, do you know what? I write for the enjoyment of it. Yeah. It's probably, I'm making up for the fact that I don't read much. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got that much in your head anyway, haven't you? Yeah. 
Do you know what? Yeah. I'm do- Sorry, I'm going off on a tangent again. I'm doing <laughs> face- Facebook for the Lighthouse story. That would be an excellent platform for it. There's that many sort of local groups. You know, there's local historical groups. Um, you know, Friends of the Wirral, Friends of Liverpool, you know, history things. There's, there's that yeah. many. And it'd be, you know, you'd have an instant audience for that. Yeah, well, we've, the Liso Lighthouse do have a, uh, a page, oh, yeah. a Facebook page, yeah. yeah. And what I said that I'm, I'm doing, uh, it's a charity. Yeah. So the Friends of Liso Lighthouse, um, so what I've done, I've written the book yeah. and I've said to them that if there if there's any money that comes off it, yeah. then 50% of it will go to the charity. Okay. So yeah. we can do more repairs to the lighthouse and things yeah. like that. And yeah. and if local schools want to go around and chat, Tell them why I wrote the book, give them some of the history. I'll gladly go free of charge. Yeah. Let's have some fun. Do you work there as a volunteer then, yeah? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. How, how, how did you get into that? That's, you know, somebody. Twitter? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen, I seen a post on Twitter saying that uh, they were desperate because all of the people that are there at the moment, probably in the late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. So they're not getting any younger. And what they yeah. said, it was a play. Yeah. Can people actually come out and and help us be volunteers? Because if we can't get up the stairs, the place yeah. closes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went out and and I spoke to uh, uh, Janet Janet Belton, her name is, and uh, she said, Are you, "Will you come? Will you come and talk? You know, come and talk to us." And I said, "Yeah." Went out there and I said, "Yeah, I'll I'll do the tours. I'll speak to people." Yeah. And she was gobsmacked because she had loads of students that came <laughs> out, and when they said. You're gonna you're gonna be taking groups of fifteen and talking about the like oh don't talk to people. I went yeah. behind the shop though. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. it's good. We're getting quite a lot of volunteers now, so I still need more though. Yeah. So you you, you put a call out for more volunteers to, to get out there and get in touch. Yeah, out there, get in touch. Yeah. It's only a couple of hours on, on two Sundays a month. You have great fun, meet great people. Okay. Well, I'm going off on a tangent again. I can't help but noticing the Liverpool badge behind you, which I'm just sitting back and admiring. Did you get to go to many matches, please? I don't know. It, um, Sounds kind of sick, isn't it? I, I lost my father three years ago. Oh. And, um, you know, he used to he used to go with me, me, me dad yeah. a few times. But getting tickets nowadays is so Impossible. difficult. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so love to, but mm. I'm like anyone, so frustrated with my team and then elated, then frustrated, yeah. up and down like a yo-yo. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's football, isn't it? Yeah. What What's the best game you've ever seen? Do you, do you watch it on the telly than the matches? Uh, best game I've ever seen. God, I, th- I think it was against Barcelona. We beat, beat them four 0 at Anfield. Yeah. We, we we were to go out that night, weren't we? You know, there's no way you can come back three 0 from Barcelona, but we've done it. It was a magical night, wasn't it? Really. Uh, well, Aldo just lives at the top of our road. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And to see him bouncing up on there, <laughs> you know, screaming his head yeah, off and yeah. that. That's a great Every clip. Every time I go past to beat me on if he's taking his bins out. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we chatted with, with Aldo a couple of weeks ago, actually a couple of months ago. He did say before the chat, he said, I've only got 10 minutes free. And we'll be chatting for about 40 minutes. And I said to him about three times, you need to go. <laughs> but he was, he was in his element. We were just talking about Liverpool, yeah. you know, and football. And yeah. I'd listen to him all day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he, he comes into the bear and staff with Sammy Lee and that now and again. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a big group of them and they're all having a good chat. And of course, yeah. my wife's talking to me in one ear and I've got the other ear turned to the other <laughs> oh, yeah. they're talking. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to a new writer, someone who's got an aspiration of getting the words on paper, but they, they just haven't got round to it yet? Well, I never, I never knew I was going to write a book hmm. until I've seen these two dogs running up this beach. <laughs> Um, I think I think the best thing you can do is get the story in your head first. Hmm. Don't know. I, I, to me, opening a, a laptop or an empty page yeah. will just frighten you. Get the story in your head first, and then you've got something to go at. Get the beginning, yeah. get the middle, and get the end. Yeah. And once you've got them, it's just filling it out and enjoying it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I've spoken to a couple of people who've said that they. They've got no idea. They just sort of start like automatic writing. There's no way I could do that. It, it just t- too much. I think the other thing, Terry, you'll see in the back of my book, there's a, a mention to the Dovedale Towers on Penny Lane. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I wrote, apart from these two sheets of paper, I wrote oh, the entire book yeah. in the Dovedale Towers. You've put a picture on Twitter, haven't you, saying, guess where I am? Yeah. I, I, had, I had my mind at you somewhere in Lark Lane, but that was Dovedale, no. yeah. 
It's the Dovedale Towers, yeah. and Freddie Mercury lived oh, there. Yeah. yeah, Cream. Yeah, the Beatles played there. Yeah. Ken Dodge used to have his pre meetings for his shows in there. Did he? Oh. And I must be getting something off all of them. Hmm. Must be. Yeah, it's probably The off. place is magical. It's just, oh, I get so much inspiration when I walk in there because yeah. there's a big pair of stags' antlers on the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, which Nitesh put in the book. Wore them on his head, and that's where he got the idea from. And that's great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but listen, it, it's been a delight chatting with you, and it's um, I'm excited for for all the books that you've got, <laughs> and that are going to be out. Oh, brilliant! Thanks very much, mate. Appreciate that. Well, right, let's keep in touch anyway, Pete. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, you got me a mobile, so yeah, give us a yeah. ring. Like, all right, nice one. Cheers. Well, thanks for now, anyway. Cool. What's up?